for the longest time, if you made a call inside of Matrix, this was being done through Jitsi. Jitsi is an incredible piece of open source video conferencing software. Anybody can go and host it. I've used it inside of Element. I've used it as a standalone thing. Jitsi is great. I love it. But for what Matrix is trying to be, a decentralized chat service, Jitsi is not a good fit. It is a terrible piece of software for that use case. Even though anybody can go and host Jitsi, it's still a centralized server hosting this application. Matrix isn't like that. Matrix is this network of servers all connecting together. And the idea with Matrix is if a bunch of people are having a discussion and then one of those people go offline for whatever reason, the discussion keeps going perfectly fine. But if you're having a discussion through Jitsi and the server hosting Jitsi goes down, well, the call ends and there's not much that can really be done about that. So all the way back in 2020, when it comes to one-on-one -on -one calls, Jitsi was no longer being used instead being replaced with these calls that run natively over the Matrix network, coming with all of the benefits that come with Matrix, like the reliability, the end-to-end -end encryption if you want to use that, and all of that fun stuff. But that still left group calls being run on Jitsi. And I don't know how this slipped under my radar, but back at the start of March, it finally became possible to do group calls natively over Matrix using Element Call. Now, this is still very much in an alpha and still heavily being worked on, but it is a proof of concept to show it can be done. But before we get into that, if you want to support the channel and perhaps you need a server, be sure to go check out brodyrobertson.xyz slash Linode, linked on screen and in the description down below. When you sign up, add your details and all of that fun stuff, you'll be given $100 free credit. And being completely honest, I have been using Linode way before they knew I existed, and I think they run a great service. And now enjoy the rest of the video. Now, when I say proof of concept, I very much mean proof of concept. So when you have a video call or a voice call infrastructure and you have a centralized server, it works in a pretty straightforward way. So you have one person who wants to join, you have another person who wants to join, and you'll have some sort of server in the middle. This person will send data to the server, this person will receive data, this person will send data, this person will receive data. Pretty straightforward, nothing too complicated there. And if you want to add more people to the call, it's also easy. They can do the exact same thing, join the server, send data to it, receive data from the server, no problem whatsoever. But the way the native matrix calls are working is through WebRTC in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion. So when you have one-on-one -on -one calls, this is pretty straightforward. This person sends data to this person. This person sends data to this person. They send data back and forth, no problems whatsoever. But what if you start adding in extra people? This is the reason why it took so long to get it to the point where it's actually functional. And right now, it's only barely functional. It's limited to eight participants. And you'll see exactly why. Let's add an extra person. So how do we get data between all of the participants? Well, we need to go and connect everybody like so. All right. Well, what if we add another person? Well, now we have to send data here, receive data from here, send it here, receive data from here, send here, and also receive data from here. And you can see what the problem is here. As you add more and more people, it gets exponentially more complex to make the network run. This is what is known as a full mesh network because everybody is meshed together. This is a functional architecture, it will get stuff done, but it is extremely bandwidth and computationally taxing, and it gets to the point very quickly where for expensive tasks like video encoding and decoding, it's not exactly functional. So there are a couple of solutions on the table. One of those is basically just remaking Jitsi. This is through a solution called a selective forwarding unit. Basically the idea here is we have a server in the center, and then we send data to the server and we receive data from the server. That's what it is. Pretty straightforward. The problem is that this has the exact same issue that we see with Jitsi. If the selective forwarding unit goes down, well, everything goes down then. 
But an important thing to note about Matrix is even though everybody can run their own home server, you may not have everybody doing so. It's very likely a lot of people are on one of the big home servers, or you might just have a call where a couple of people are on some random home server. So you might have a setup like this. We have this person here, this person here, all connected to this home server. Then you have this person here on this home server and this person here on this home server. Now, what you can do instead of having one centralized selective forwarding unit to send the data around, you have decentralized forwarding units running on the home server. So then what you can do is you can full mesh the selective forwarding units together. And even though you still have a full mesh, it's far less connections being made. The nice thing about a selective forwarding unit, whether it's the centralized version or the cascaded decentralized version, neither of them you decode and re-encode the data. All you're doing is just passing the video stream along. If it's encrypted, if it's not encrypted, you don't care. All you do is just pass the data along and that's all you do. In the case of something like a multi-point conferencing unit, it does the same thing with passing data along, but it'll also go and decode and re-encode the data, which in cases of passing around data, which is a really high bit rate, might be a better solution for people that have slower connections. But then in the case of an encrypted call, the server has no ability to decode and re-encode that stream because it doesn't have the encryption keys. So all of these have their own use cases, even the centralized ones like the centralized SFU, which deals with the issue of having a full mesh net, even though there's going to be a lot of load on that centralized server. And according to the docs or the proposal, or whatever you want to call it, all of these are going to be used in some way or another. Right now, only the full mesh net is being used, but that is just not scalable. So these other things need to be tried to see where best they will work, including even a hybrid approach using both an SFU and an MCU. All of these things are worth trying, and it's interesting to see which one is going to be ultimately mainly used. Now, even with these changes to support way more people, there still would be a fairly obvious limitation, but no worse than something like Discord. To avoid basically a UX nightmare, if you want to have multiple calls, you need to have multiple rooms. Basically, one call per room. This is exactly the same way as Discord does it with its chat rooms, and it makes so much more sense. Right now, if you want to try out Element Call, you can go and do so, and it works basically like any sort of video conferencing software does. Pretty much, they all have the exact same design. If you've used one, you know how all of the others work. But there are some limitations with it being fairly early, besides the user limitations. One of those is it's currently limited to the home server, call.ems.host. This isn't set up to be like that for the future, they just haven't finished making logins work. So the only server you can log into is the server they have set up for testing. If you want to, there are methods to get your current account pointed at element call. You shouldn't do so, because if you have a bunch of rooms associated with your account, there's going to be a lot of rooms there that element call has no idea what to do with. And it's just going to slow it down for basically no reason. If you do want to test it out, run it against your home server, go and submit some code, do whatever you want with it. Like everything else related to Matrix, it is available over on the GitHub with this link right here, which I'll leave linked in the description down below. Now, while in the future it will support end-to-end -end encryption, like everything else on the Matrix network, right now group calls do have it disabled. That's basically just to make it easier to identify bugs. End-to-end -end encryption is great, but it does get in the way of that. But on that note, if you don't want to use end-to-end -end encryption, you obviously don't have to. So this could be because maybe you're using a client that doesn't support end-to-end -end encryption. Maybe you want to let people join who are using those clients who don't support it. Maybe you just don't care. And you just don't think end-to-end -end encryption really matters for whatever discussion you're having. Maybe you're talking about, I don't know, the current state of video gaming or something. You just really don't care. And there are other little client issues like not being able to select your audio output device. So if you have a pair of speakers and Bluetooth headphones attached to your system, you can't go and switch between which one's being used. You have to go and only use whatever set is the default. So you can go and override that on your system, but it can't be overridden inside of the client itself. And hey, there's no theming right now, but at least the only theme it does have is a dark theme. So 
I guess, too bad for people who like light themes, but in the future it's going to have that and all of the other fun stuff you'd expect to be there. And if you want to go and try it out for yourself, but you don't want to go and host it, the current beta is being hosted over on call.element.io, and you can go and use it there. Right now, Matrix is still relatively small. It's certainly growing bigger and bigger as time goes on, but it's obviously nowhere near the size of Discord. But I do have my Discord server bridged over to Matrix, so if you want to go and join that, but you don't want to use proprietary software like Discord, that is always going to be an option. And I'm going to be keeping an eye on Matrix because some of the stuff they've been doing has been really cool. Maybe at some point it's going to be a really big service, but at least for now, it's a really cool tech experiment to see what they're trying to do. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you currently use Matrix and think it's a great service? Or maybe you've never used it, but you've been waiting for something like group calls to actually work well. I would love to know. So if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. A gaming channel called Brody Optum Plays. That's going to be it for me and... I'm out.